Yo, welcome to Black Copper Lips. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for someone to come in and say it. Black Copper Lips. Black Copper Lips. You know, yeah, actually we're missing somebody, someone's missing, someone's missing man. Anyway, welcome Sam Day, we've got Sam Day in the house. Welcome, yeah, it's a Sam. pleasure, it's an absolute pleasure. Yeah man, it's a pleasure. You know, actually, he's like my twin brother man, it's like looking in the mirror. He really is. <laughs> ah, hey, hey, wait, I told you he was handsome like you, didn't like <laughs> <laughs> just like a second Wayne and that. But yeah. I can ask you, I can ask you how old you are Sam, if you don't mind. 27. Oh, so he's my younger brother. He's a like younger, younger version, brother. man. A younger version. <laughs> <laughs> Upgrade. <laughs> Hello, Brain. No, wow. A, a, a less intelligent, it, less handsome version. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, evolution <laughs> model, man. Call it evolution. <laughs> I like this guy already, man. <laughs> 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 now, yeah. I gotta be honest, though. When I first, when I first saw Sam and he had, he had on his jacket and his shirt, I had to yeah. do a double take. I was thinking, wait there. How could Wayne's doubling up as an <laughs> internet entrepreneur, man? He never told me about it. Seriously, he's like. <laughs> Yeah, man. But um, obviously, I, I know Sam. Um, we we spoke, God, about about two months ago now. I think we we, we met up, maybe even less than that, six weeks. And um, I was lucky enough to get Sam on my um, in my group. Did an interview, mate. Everyone was wowed by you. Thank you very much, Sam. Thank you, man. Oh, it was a pleasure. It was yeah. such a pleasure being on that platform, man. Thank, thank you for that shout out. I need to get you on my platform soon. It's going to happen. Whenever you're ready, man. You're ready. Yeah. I, know, I know you've inspired some people because they've gone off and they've, they've, they've thrown questions into the group. And honestly, man, the, the bubble of activity is nice. So thank you, sir. <laughs> anyway, before, before we start off with Sam, you know, I've got something stupid to, to say. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, was watch, I was watching German TV the other day, and I know for a fact you've got it in England too. There's a show called Naked Attraction, man. And all of these, so the bottom half of you, the man or the or the partner, the potential partner. I was looking at it, like, what the hell? I was like, man, they call me any bull crap, man, on TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, looking. mate. All, all I say, right, is it's nastiness. The thing is, right, if my if my nan stayed up late enough to watch a show like that, she'd be cussing for the rest of the year. Oh, what am I put them nastiness on the TV? We can't yeah. use that. You oh, man, you not that one while I'm watching my telly, man. Like, that's not what I watch the hey, TV. Hey, I'm, I'm not being funny now. Listen, and, and I'm sorry, ladies, if you're listening, but bits ain't, bits ain't nice. I'm sorry. Yeah. That, that's why you have the light off when you go to bed. Oh you get me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the jungle. Of, <laughs> to kind of say, well, hold on a minute. Yeah, I, I like this man because he's, He's, droop, he's drooping the right way. Damn, man. This yeah. is crazy, man. Just me, I could just see some balls and that on TV. I was like, what? It's, a it's a balance, though, isn't it, lads? It's a balance because I feel like the body has been sexualized so much. Yeah. In Western, in Western culture, it's kind of like going back to the, to the good old days Major. when he wasn't just seen as, you know, or I don't know, I don't really, disclaimer, I don't watch them. <laughs> you know yeah, I, mean? I was going to say, I was gonna say yeah. This is what you're <laughs> be careful, brother. Be careful, man. You're just, walking down the path. The, the, the body is supposed to be beautiful. It's supposed to be cherished. This is not supposed to be always sexualized. And so maybe a little bit more of, you know, showing the beauty of, of, of a body. He's definitely me. He's definitely me, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stuff like that scares me. The thing is, you got to remember, I mean, I'm, I'm older than you guys. So I remember when TV was like, it was lightness and butterflies and, you know, no swe swearing. If you heard sw swearing on the TV, the next day it would be national news in the newspaper. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. And then even like the way that they, the adverts they do now, it's, it's, it, it, it's nothing, nothing, there's no kind of sacred ground. You know, the biggest, the biggest the government can do now is say, oh, we're going to ban adverts of fast food before nine o'clock. You know what I mean? That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> I think that's really good. Yeah, well, mate, I'm not being funny. What difference is that going to make? Really and truly. Because if you're hungry and you've got money in your pocket, you will go to shop. If you've got kids and they're going, ma'am, 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 McDonald's, McDonald's, eventually you're going to say yes. So how is it that they're not seeing that? Because they should be in bed at nine anyway. So they should be seeing all fast food. Yeah. <laughs> so how's it, how's it going to save the world? It's crazy, man. Was it a bad bit, like, from... I think it was banned from TV full stop, wasn't it? Or was it just prime know. time? Man, but what they're trying to do, they're trying to um, halt the obesity. Yeah. Now, it's, it's a good thing. thing. It's a good thing. No, no, it's a great thing. But there's a simple solution as far as I'm concerned. 
No. Stop letting five takeaway shops open next door to each other on the same road. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> so, no, you know, the mad thing is that I've thought about this before about the obesity Me too. thing. You know, I reckon we was kind of along the right track, but it was never really picked up properly. I think the main thing that should have really been done is to have like a massive transition towards like physical exercise and that. And yeah. really, I don't know, we haven't really got the current infrastructure in our road system now. I think we need to sort of work out how to sort of either widen these roads or create actual bike routes or bike lanes. Even if you have to Holland and Germany. Bike, yeah, because I think like it does. Why does it have to follow the exact highway? You know what I mean? There's plenty of usually path or spare land somewhere, kind of a, a lot of routes to just create individual bike routes and everything like that that uh, mm -hmm. you know get you everywhere you need to go but there might not necessarily be the way you would go on road i think it'd be a, it, not too too expensive and i think there's got to be a massive culture shift now to how people get to school what they do when they get there as 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 as, 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 as the old fart in the room i'm gonna tell you something now you for years for years schools have been selling off their land for years, they've been busy cutting their physical education. For years, yeah. kids have been allowed to not do PE because they don't feel quite right. So if you think about it, how are you going to force people who for like 10, 15 years be saying, they've been told, yeah, you can do whatever you like, you can sit on your backside, you ain't got to keep fit, to then say, right, no more kebab meat. It's a hard... That's, that's why, I think, that's why that, I think that backs up kind of what I'm saying. Sorry to jump in there again, Alistair, but I think that kind of backs up what I'm saying because, you know, they say, you know, the Romans say, you know, you build it and they will come. And I really believe that, you know, you create really nice sort of um, routes that are got, reminiscent, Alistair, of the bike stroke joggers routes that you saw in uh, Rio, you know, yeah, when it's yeah, just, yeah. Alone. Yeah. And just get, I mean, you even got your own lights there, man. Them things don't mess about. Like, they, they, just to create something. And I think generally more people would use it. Younger kids are interested in everything. If there's something new like that, they're going to want to do it, especially if there's a push towards, you know, if you get a bike, you know what I mean? We'll, the government or whatever will put something towards it or there's incentives to help you get or do your license like you used to back in the day. Something mm -hmm. to try and give the kids a push towards that. Because like you say, you're not going to get them to stop eating crap. But what the difference is when we were kids, and I am old enough, I'm 37 as well, you know what I mean? Yeah, young boy, my yeah, young boy, young boy, my young boy, young boy, young boy. Young boy. <laughs> but when we were kids, yeah, we used to go out and play. Like, oh, actually, oh, go out and play. Sam, you're not that, you know, I'm not calling you an old guy by any chance, but I bet you when you was a kid, you went out and played, you know what I mean? Grab two pieces of stick and go and climb tree and whatever it may be. You know what I mean? Them kids now, this is kids playing. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, like yeah, keep playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah, not yeah, the yeah. same thing anymore. Yeah. I'm guilty of it myself, bro. I'm sure we all have to a certain extent. You guys spend it's probably the same as me in business and that. Spend a lot of time online. That's just doing some of the business sort of stuff that you're doing. And then you're kind of on a social platform. So you've got to have to scroll. And, you know, before you know it, hours have gone. And you're checking probably more often than you're not, than you probably like. I'm just speaking from personal experience now. So this is what I live through as well. I don't yeah. exercise. I've got a car. I drive everywhere. You know, but it was nice the other day. I took some time out and I just thought, you know what, no. And I go and stroll on the beach for a few, you know, a few hours and everything like that. The big benefit of lockdown for me was I actually exercised more. So every day I was I was aiming for my steps goal. I was walking. That's running from the wife, Mike. That's walking. not the same thing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two, two, two and a half miles, ten thousand steps. But religiously, I mean, I think I put twenty pounds in my car and it lasted me like three months. You know I mean, because wow. I didn't even use my car at all. You know what I mean? Three wow. months to the gallon, that's some serious mileage, that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> but obviously now the world's getting back to normal. The weather seems to have changed as well, which doesn't help because yeah. walking, in, walking in the rain ain't so attractive. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, man, I, e but, I, I don't know. I, I think just banning the advert after a certain time, to me, that's just rubbish, man. That's just that's 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 stupidity. You know, because if you think about it, what they've said to the country is, right, if you go out and eat, we're going to give you half your money back. And then on the next week, they're saying, oh, by the way, we want you to get fit and stop, stop eating yeah. so much food. Now, if, oh. they were interested, if they were interested in supporting families, why don't they say, I'll tell you what, what we'll do, we're going to cut fuel, cut petrol, because every single family that's got a house is going to benefit. And also, the, the, the supermarkets and that will benefit by being able to pass on that price, that price cut to your groceries as well. Everybody yeah. benefits then. He said, oh, yeah, go and go eat at Nando's and get one of six-pound chicken. What? <laughs> I think, no. think um, e-bikes... Is the way forward, and um, I believe the, the, the skyrocketing this year, the, um, the sale of e-bikes. 
I think it was 3,000% or something stupid like that. It was ridiculous. Wow. Yeah, so, um, huge, huge job. like I said, I think with e-bikes, it brings, it's, it's fun. You can f- ride further. So I think if you can get an e-bike into everybody's hands, basically, but you've got to bring the prices down because they're really extortionate at the moment. But once they bring the prices down, they're more afford them. I think that yeah. buses and all that would be a thing of the past, I reckon. Because it's okay. just more fun. Like, if you look at, like, Holland, and everyone just swears by the bike. Everybody's yeah. riding everywhere. Partly because uh, Holland's quite flat. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's flat hands. Flat hands. Oh, man. Is it the flat hands. Yeah. Yeah, or lowlands. Yeah, um, lowlands. So, um, yeah, I think that once that takes shape, I think in England too, then it won't be fit again, man, then we'll be all good. Anyway, let's get to our guest, man, because, you know, we're, we're talking here, man. What, yeah. <laughs> like, I want to talk to Sam. I ain't here to talk to Mr. Nigel Campbell, by the way, to one with the, the, the shoot, nice hairstyle. And uh, Simon uh, Johnson. <laughs> no no offence taken. Is the guy with the hat. <laughs> and, I'm at our and Sam Day is the guy in the, is it Ralph Lauren top? Is that Ralph Lauren? He's the better looking Wayne. <laughs> No, wait, didn't he? He just said he was the... No, <laughs> he's younger than him. He's the version 2.0. If he's younger, he's better. Slightly less advanced. No, no, no. no. no, no. If he's, young, he's younger, he's better because the, the G's have got stronger, man. Uh, uh, no, 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 less advanced. One point. Oh, Stalio, let me just finish off with one point as well. The accent don't grate so much, you know. It's more... Je ne sais quoi. Anyway, Sam. You know, Sam said uh, anyway, Sam, so you do marketing, is that correct? This is your field. What is your field exactly? Explain to us what you do. Um, what I do. So in a nutshell, I am a con- well, I'm a content creator um, right. and I basically help entrepreneurs, business owners um, to navigate through the busy internet um, a little bit better. So if you've, got a, if you've got a business, you've got a website, you've got a product, you've got a service and you're like, man, how do I get up to speed with technology and how to get out there um then i'm the guy for you basically so what, what about like like do you deal with like youtube and stuff too um so i deal i i deal with everything i like to to think of myself as like the general pa- practitioner for marketing <laughs> I like it man. so i i lit- like people literally come to me and i diagnose them like PhD, and I, you know <laughs> <laughs> and, and i kind of can tell them what direction they need to go into so that could be youtube uh, creating video content so optimizing video for youtube for subscribers for conversions um, i specialize in generating leads and sales so i'm not really about the kind of vanity metrics of like loads of subscribers and followers and yeah. that. i'm more focused on helping businesses to grow with the numbers that matter so um actual leads and customers and pound signs or dollar signs or euro <laughs> signs wherever wherever you're from getting that into your bank account or your paypal account or your stripe that's what i'm more about but um yeah there, there are i got no ka-ching sign there al stalio man you're a bit slow on the thing you wish like ka-ching <laughs> when we say that you know what i mean like two two ka-ching what's going on so sam um obviously we've spoken but can you tell can you tell the guys um how you got into uh, online marketing Yeah, so um, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 17. Uh, My first business was a music and arts academy. Um, Are you a musician or? I can fly here. No one one passed the window or anything. (laughs) (laughs) No lie, Sam. No No lie. lie. (laughs) Are you you a musician, Sam? Yeah, I've got my keyboard here. It's not plugged in. Otherwise, I would have played a chord or two. Damn. Uh, 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 Maybe uh, you two are twins, man, because you're very uh, and Stanio is also a, a self-taught pianist. Like, like, who, um, she did, did a launch for Audi a couple of years ago. So no, 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 Mercedes, man. No, talk, talk oh, Mercedes. Oh, sorry. Mercedes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going with some respect on his name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some respect on my name, man. <laughs> Audi. Audi is just like second-class cars, man. <laughs> so, sorry. So you, um, so you had a, um, a music academy? Yeah, so I taught music. I taught, uh, well, I played a sax. Oh. My first nice. instrument. He's a high level of me, man. <laughs> no, not even like piano is, is like one of my favorite instruments. Um, but yeah, I played, I was, I was taught on sax. Um, so I was, my first business was literally just teaching people how to play the saxophone. Okay. Um, and that was like, I didn't want a, a traditional job, even from, from 17. I was like, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't want to be in, in the system. Had a few racist bosses as well, kind of coming, climbing up the ladder. And I was yeah. like, no, I, don't want, I don't want any, I don't want any of this. 
Yeah. Um, and it was like that subtle racism as well, where you, you know it's racism, but you can't, can't say do nothing about it. Yeah, you can't do nothing about it. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's yeah, it's, it, it, was, it was difficult for me to deal with. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make, I'm going to make something of myself. Um, and I've basically been self-employed ever since. So how I got online was uh, it, my last year of university, I started on eBay and it was like my most successful year ever. Um, I took my business from literally from a 300 pound investment. And within a few months, I was doing about a grand a week in sales um, in revenue. And then I'll, that's, uh, when I left uni, I was like, online is where it's at. And I haven't looked back since. <laughs> wow. So did you, when you went to uni, was it to study what, what you're doing now? Or was it a completely unrelated subject? Yeah, so um, I grew up in the church. I strayed away a little bit. Don't don't tell my my family. <laughs> but um, I was like very because I've been in church my whole entire life. I kind of knew about theology. I knew I knew about the Bible and, and Christian theology. So I wanted three years to kind of um, focus on the business, mm. but at the same time, like I get a, get get money in. So I'd have a business grant. Um, but I wanted an, e an easy degree, so to speak. So I chose theology because I knew it was going to be easy for me because I knew Christian theology in and out, really. Um, and I was able to use the grant that I, I was given to invest in the business and just focus on business and stuff like that. And also it kind of just give, gave me three years to just figure a lot of stuff out that I didn't already know, if that made sense. Okay. So, so what was yeah. your inspiration? What You know, you're 17. So you're like looking around like, you know what, I ain't going to be a car dealer manager i'm not gonna work in a bank i ain't gonna go to the grocery store or grocery store <laughs> supermarket what was your inspiration what made you think i'm gonna do marketing is that because like you know you can make a lot of money in marketing um so marketing kind of came a lot later marketing came after ebay um and what got me into it i think you kind of just i kind of just stumbled into it mm -hmm. um and i realized how interested i was in it because you can never learn everything in marketing it's like it's impossible there's there's yeah, so yeah. there's so many layers and like they're it's developing all the time with the internet now as well like the things you can do and the things you can track and the way you can get your product <laughs> or your service or your message out there now is is evolving tremendously so i just thought this is this is an incredible an incredible opportunity for me to kind of really specialize in this area and not a lot of companies are have really caught on yet and that's what really is interesting to me because I haven't even started yet in terms of my career because in about 10 years time, that's when a lot of the companies are going are to catch on. Yeah. And a lot of the companies that hire me now, buy my courses and stuff like that, they're kind of focused on marketing methods that were really, really important maybe five, 10 years ago. Okay. Um, and they're still important today, but they were more important then. So it's kind yeah. of like, I'm like five years ahead of the game. Yeah. And yes, it's gonna it's gonna be a snowball effect kind of thing. Yeah. So I kind of see the potential in it. Yeah, man. Can I ask you both a question, actually, yourself, Sam, and Nigel, actually, because I think it's it's relevant to both. Yeah. Um, because obviously I, I I work in the music industry as well. I'm trying to create media as well. Um, in your industry, in marketing in general, how saturated is the market like place now of people doing what you do? Because I do, from personal experience, and I don't know if this is just people who have propositioned me in my role in my business or whatever, but I do get approached by a lot of people who, who say they can obviously rate, you know, bring in um, sales and revenue and help with online and digital marketing and stuff. And to be honest, I think like, like a lot of businesses out there, I do actually have a genuine need for that, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm not, um, I'm, I'm not an expert by any means. There's so much I could do in terms of using common sense you know, like devising strategies or even speaking to people like Nigel or people I have around me and trying to, you know, get as much, soak up as much knowledge as I can. But for you guys in general, is it hard to get the messaging out? And especially when you're talking about a USP, like you're saying there, Sam, like where you see yourself, you feel like you're light years ahead almost and you, you're ready to go and, and, and share this knowledge with people. So is, is it difficult to get the message out in, in, in a crowded marketplace? Sorry, that's what I meant to say. Sure. I'll let Nigel take this one first. <laughs> I thought you might say that. Well, okay. So, I mean, yes, there are. There is a lot of other marketers out there. I too get 
every day because I've got three or four websites. So every day I'm getting someone saying, yeah, we'll do your SEO and yeah, we'll do your keywords. Um, is it difficult to get seen? I think what you, what you do online now, what, what's different between now and the old days of, of marketing is that, I mean, I call, you know, people call it attraction marketing, inbound marketing. It's about not trying to attract every single person because, I mean, one of my favorite sayings to my, my clients is, you only need 0.001% of the population of the world to be a customer and you're having a very, 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 very good life. That's even too much, man. And that, that's even too <laughs> much, that's, that's what I'm saying. Much. So as long as your message is very much aligned to who you're trying to target, and this is why people talk about niching down and that, generally, if you're consistent and your mm. message is hit, talking to the person you want to talk to and you're using emotion, because we, you know, people stop and stare when they see something. Definitely, emotion, definitely that's when you start to attract people into what you, I call your tribe or your greenhouse. And then from there, you either nurture them or you, or you sell to them if you, if you can. But, you know, at any one time, only 2%, 3% of people are ready to buy what you're selling. So if you had a room full of 100 people, only three of them after your presentation would say, yeah, here's my money. Where a lot of people... Well, I was looking at your stuff. Yeah, sorry to cut you there. I was looking at your stuff up and just to be on your page every day, just having a look through just the stuff that you were, you know, doing and, and, and uh, some of the podcast little bits you was doing. And I, I was really engaged. I mean, I must have gone through six or seven videos and that. <laughs> just, for, just because I wanted to see what you were saying next. And yeah. that's what I wanted to do. That big well, smile, the, that big laugh, the, and, like, the, engaging. The, and, like, the, the whole and point, and the whole point, because the thing is with marketing, I mean, I've learned more probably in the last six months. Actually, no, that's a lie. I probably, yeah, I probably learned look more in the last six months than I did in the previous six, but I've, cause I've really kind of honed in, into my message. And one of the things I was, I've done as well is because I've been running these workshops and I've been doing research and I've been getting feedback, all I'm doing is repeating the language that my customers and prospects have been saying to me. Yeah. So when I'm putting a post in, I'm asking a question, the engagement I'm getting now is tenfold what I was getting six months ago because it's more in tune with what people are thinking and feeling. So, well, yeah, marketing is marketing's hard. And there's a lot of competition, but if you know who you want to work with and you speak to them, they'll come to you anyway, man. And, and mm. Sam, we'll, 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 we'll go next. We'll tell you all about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. What would you say to Sam? Yeah, so, I mean, in terms of, like, the people hitting you up, even I get people hitting me up to help me to market my stuff. And then I was <laughs> like, yeah, you definitely haven't done your research. So it's kind of like, um, it's a... I wouldn't say it's a saturated market because there's a lot of people who will jump on bandwagons. Yeah. Um, and at the moment, social media marketing, uh, business development, or being an online entrepreneur is, is, is kind of, um, it's, it's a cool thing to be right now. Yeah. So in five years time, there probably won't be a lot of, a lot of us guys when, you know, I was doing business when it wasn't necessarily that, that um, cool. attractive or that cool kind of thing. So um, I think, yeah, there, there are a lot of people at the moment who are like, yeah, um, I can help you to, to do this or to do that. But it really goes, it really go, boils down to what your goals are. Um, what is it that you're trying to achieve? Because if it's, and you have to be honest with yourself about this as well. Um, if it's short term, I just want to make as much money as possible, then your strategy and how you approach that is going to be completely different then I, actually I'm trying to build a brand and I want to be well known for what I do and I want to be approached by bigger companies, maybe have a TV deal or something like that. Or if it's just, I just want to just be full time at this kind of thing and, and build a following of people who respect me, respect my art, respect what I have to say. So it really boils down to what you actually really want um, and kind of your actions or how you market yourself will determine that, if that makes sense. Okay. What I want to ask is, um, um, well, just, okay. did you get that? You get that sorry. Absolutely, answer. man. Absolutely. And I think this is what I say. Anyone watching, at home, they're going to be like, willing to know this one. Say again. So what I wanted to know is, um, what's the diff the key differences between sales and marketing? Because a lot of people would be like, it's just a salesman. Like, you, um, no, I just said that it was basically like the market's crowded. Whereas Sam was like, actually, it's not that crowded. So I'm like, is Nigel thinking, yeah, there's a lot of sales guys in marketing? And Sam's thinking, no, but marketers are different. So is there a different? Can anyone tell me this? I don't know. Yeah, and I, I think Nigel touches on it a lot with his brand. Um, you know, love, love sells. Love, I hate selling. And I, I say things, but in a, in a, in a different way. It's, we're basically saying the same thing, but we just have a different way of saying it. 
um, and for me, it's kind of like people love buying. Mm-hmm. You know, it, in general, like if 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 you go to to the to this, I don't have a wife, but if I did, I'm sure if I took her shopping, she would absolutely love it. She would love to buy the jewelry and the shoes and the dresses and mm-hmm. all of these things. But we, yeah. the second we're walking down the high street, and someone comes up to us and we think they're about to sell us something, whether it's 